What's up, everybody? Thanks, as always, for supporting the show. It would mean a lot to me if you would take a second to scroll down and hit that subscribe button to the Hoops Tonight YouTube channel, and then follow me on social media on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter so you guys don't miss any of our content over the course of this season. All right, let's talk some basketball. With the Warriors having a shot to make the playoffs now, I think that they are the team with the best chance to beat the Nuggets. With Jokic having a hard time coming up to the screen and how well Steph and Clay shoot off screens, I think it will give them open looks and open up the middle for Kaminga and Wiggins to have driving lanes. So I'm really encouraged by the recent stretch of basketball from the Warriors, but I don't necessarily think they have a real shot to beat the Nuggets Uh, just because the Nuggets are, in my opinion, the best team in the league. That doesn't mean they don't have a shot, but I do want to dive into it a little bit. So let's let's talk about both sides of the floor just for a second, just kind of a loose little like initial impression of the matchup. So specifically the idea of spacing Nikola Jokic out. Typically, I would agree with you. And ideally, you need to have a team that can bring Jokic out to the level of the screen while having the amount of off-ball talent to capitalize for the way that Denver likes to load up. Because one of the things that you'll see the Nuggets do in a series against the Warriors is they'll just defend pick and roll three on two. They they will be like, Jonathan Kaminga, shoot all the threes you want. Andrew Wiggins, shoot all the threes you want. And there will be plays where they execute their you know, uh, one, two, three on that four on three really fast. And you get a backdoor lob for Kaminga along the baseline, or maybe a slot cut from Wiggins along the wing. But Jonathan Kaminga, you know, he shot really, really well during the hot streak. He's two for 10 on his last 10 threes. And he's only 32% on the season. The playoff game plan for Kaminga will be a short closeout. The playoff game plan for Kaminga will be, you can play off this guy to help elsewhere. And the same goes for Andrew Wiggins. And so while Steph is uniquely equipped to stretch Denver's defense out at the point of attack, they are not super well equipped on the weak side to take advantage of it. And so that doesn't mean they can't do it, but like they would just have to have their timing down so good on those backdoor cuts. And Aaron Gordon's going to be just camping under the basket, basically that entire series. Like it's just going to be, it'll be a little bit of a tougher matchup because Denver's defense is built to withstand teams that are very top heavy with talent, which the Warriors definitely qualify as on the other end of the floor. I really like the matchup for the Warriors. They have the unique ability to put a big, strong wing in Andrew Wiggins on Jamal Murray while having one of the best options in the league to guard in Nicole Jokic and Draymond Green. And so they have as good a chance as anybody in the league to, you know, with the Nuggets, it's always this delicate balance between guarding the Jokic Murray actions two on two versus sending an additional body where guys like KCP, Aaron Gordon and Michael Porter Jr. can kill you. Right. And like, to me, You know, it's kind of like the one time we saw the Nuggets lose in the last two rounds last year was in the NBA Finals game two against the Heat. What happened in that series, in that game? It was Jimmy Butler and Bam just did an unbelievable job guarding the Jokic Murray two man game. And it's like, I think Wiggins and Draymond have that potential. And so to kind of like, to uh, And then backside athleticism too, just having a Jonathan Kaminga on the weak side that can rotate around. That's real athleticism there. Like, you know, Steph and whether it's Brandon Podziemski or Clay at the two, they have the ability from an IQ standpoint to rotate around and they can rebound. Like that, te- that lineup's been really gifted defensively. So to kind of like put a bow on it, like I would still pick the Nuggets. They deserve to be the favorites in that matchup. They're the defending champions. I think they're the best team in the league this year by a reasonable margin. Um, But yeah, of course the Warriors have a chance. It would just come down to, I think defensively they have as good a chance as anybody to slow down the Nuggets just because some of their higher end personnel. But on the other end of the floor is going to be the big one. It's, will they be able to load up on Steph and will Andrew Wiggins and Jonathan Kaminga in particular be able to consistently cause problems for them? And, And honestly, matchups are a big one too because one of the things you'll see is like, who's Aaron Gordon's going to guard? So, Aaron, one of the things that the Warriors really like to do is to attack post-up mismatches to begin possessions with Wiggins and Kaminga in particular. So let's say, uh, uh, you know, uh, Mike Malone goes, we're going to put Aaron Gordon on Jonathan Kaminga because he's been one of the best young post players in the league this year. We're going to take him away. Well, chances are you're going to end up with a lot of possessions where Andrew Wiggins is being guarded by someone like a Michael Porter Jr., right? And like, that's a matchup that he can take advantage of. He's got a speed and athleticism advantage on him. Like Michael Porter Jr. doesn't move super well laterally. And so maybe you can get 
Andrew Wiggins with some quick slot isos where he just rips through to the right and just uses his athleticism to beat Michael Porter Jr. Like every time we get into these playoff matchups, there's always every team brings different advantages to the table and you kind of lay them out and you start to look at them. And and I definitely think the Warriors have some tools in their toolkit that can give Denver issues. But I do think that Denver's defense is set up in a way to cause Golden State some problems. But same goes on the other end of the floor. I just think the uh, the Nuggets are a better basketball team overall, and they deserve the like kind of that initial confidence, if that makes sense. All right, two more questions. We're out of here. Hi, Jason. Warriors fan here. Clay Thompson did an interview with Logan Murdoch on Monday where he said that he is open to taking a reduced role following a mold of how Reggie Miller and Ray Allen contributed in their later years. What do you think that means for his game? And how do you think that affects lineups, play style, and overall strategy for Golden State? Enjoy the show. Few people break it down like you do. Keep up the great work. Thank you for the kind words. I really appreciate it. Um, I was never worried about this with Clay Thompson. The thing that I always talk about this when I'm comparing some of the top players in the league, but to me, there's a big difference between like loving basketball and hating losing. And generally speaking, the teams that are truly great, they hate losing more than anything. It's like a difference. It's like there's a love of the game and then there's like overarching competitiveness. And there's a competitiveness that the Warriors group has that I think is directly responsible for a lot of their success over the years. Like these guys are just psychopath competitors. Clay Thompson is definitely one of those guys. This guy, you can just tell by watching him emotionally after every win and loss, like the, everything for this guy hinges on winning basketball games. And so there obviously was going to be a little bit of a transition as Clay came to acceptance with his kind of decline over the last few years. And I mean, he himself has said it like, dude, I'm 35. I think he's 35. That's his, if I got his age right. But he's like, dude, I'm 35 post Achilles post ACL. Like I, I he, like he, he's very aware uh, of his own decline. He understands. And beyond that, like I never had a doubt that he'd be the type of guy that would do whatever it takes to help the team win, whether that's in the short term, you know, don't be surprised if in a big playoff moment, if Brandon Podziemski gets to close games over clay, taking a discount in the off season to stay on the roster, uh, uh, for the final years of his career, um, uh, in a smaller role rather than chasing money elsewhere. Like, like I just think clay's the kind of guy that'll do that for his team. Cause all he cares about is winning. All right, last question. Does it feel like this year is more wide open than most to win the championship? Even though Denver is the clear front runner, they don't feel unbeatable to me. Would love to know your thoughts. Love the show best in the business. Once again, thank you for the kind words and for the support. Um, I agree. I don't think Denver's unbeatable. I do think they're a clearly discernible margin above everybody else, but I don't think it's a particularly large margin. To me, it feels pretty similar to last year in the sense that there's like six or seven teams that have a real chance and then there's another like three or four that have puncher's chances. But in situations like that, that is where I tend to lean on some of the more experienced teams, right? And like like Denver, to me, like if they end up in a series with a team that doesn't really know who they are yet, whether it's like a Western Conference Finals matchup with a Minnesota or an Oklahoma City, for instance, right? Like those... The, that to me is an example where like in a series like that, just having been there before matters a ton. Ha, like b- uh, being in those wars matters a ton. And like a, a lot of, th- a lot of times we, like we gloss over the fact that like Denver won easily last year, but they've had their struggles. They lost two years in a row, uh, you know, with Jokic at the helm with guys out of the lineup, you know, like Aaron Gordon was still playing during those th- those games, right? Like, it's not like they were... Um, uh, it's not like it was just Jokic and four bums, right? Like, yeah, those guys were still getting reps. Going back to 2020, trailing 3-1 in the Clippers series and coming back to win, losing to the Lakers in the Western Conference Finals. Like, these Nuggets have been in battles, man. They've been in battles. The, the, uh, like, they, they, they are tested. This is a group that has been together a long time. And so, to me, that is their their kind of differentiator. But th- I definitely agree that this is m- uh, more wide open than most years. But it does remind me a lot of last year in the sense that it feels like there's a hefty, like, dozen teams that have, like, a believable chance to do it, even if it's somewhat small. But that there's this clear kind of, like, tier at the top that feels closer than everyone else. <laughs> 